One of the names for God in the Bible is Jehovah Rapha, which means God the healer. But is God still a healer? Does he still heal people today? In today's culture, you'll hear Christians say all kinds of reasons why one of the people that they prayed for or someone that they prayed for didn't get healed. But what does the Bible have to say about God healing the sick? Let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Landon Langley, and I make these videos for people like you that want to grow in their relationship with God. Today, we're talking about God as a healer, and we're looking at Psalms 103 verses 2 through 4 as our topic scripture. So let's go ahead and read it and see what it has to say, the little nugget of truth that it has to say to us about God being a healer. Let's check it out. Psalms 103 verses 2 through 4 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. I was reading this passage recently and I kind of rediscovered that this passage so clearly points to Jesus. And there's definitely different uh, messianic prophecies that you can find in Psalms and Isaiah and really everywhere in the, in the Old Testament where it points to Jesus and his coming and it tells us things even like, you know, he's the lamb that would be slain, that none of his bones would be broken. There's so many interesting different messianic prophecies that we see in the Old Testament, but I didn't really know that this was one of them where I could see he's the one that forgives all of our sins. He heals all our diseases. He's crowning us with mercy and righteousness. It has so much to say to us about who Jesus is going to be to his people. And we can also see here that God's actually giving us a promise that he is the one who heals all of our diseases. Not some of our diseases, not most of our diseases, not heals all of our diseases as long as they're not benefiting uh, him for sanctifying us. He heals all of our diseases just the same as he removes all of our sin from us when we repent and when we believe. So to me, this is uh, a promise about what Jesus is fulfilling and actually, we can see it as well in Isaiah 53. So let's go ahead and read that. Isaiah 53 verses 4 through 5 says, Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Here in Isaiah 53, we can see this really graphic but really beautiful picture of Jesus and just why he was on that cross uh, and why he had to go through the different things that he went through. It says that by his whips, by his wounds, that we are actually healed. And so we can see that the blood of Jesus is here to cleanse us of our sin and the body of Jesus is here to remove the effects of that sin on our body. You know, in the Garden of Eden, as far as I know, there was no crying, there was no sickness, there was no disease. All these things, they came after sin came into the, onto the scene. And if all these things came after sin came on the scene, then we can see in Jesus that God wanted to redeem the story of mankind, and he wanted to use Jesus as that redemption in body, in spirit, in mind. He gave us a new mind, Romans 12. He gave us a new heart, and he gave us a new spirit. He put his own spirit inside of us, and then he heals all of our diseases. He's actually taking us who have fallen away from grace, fallen away from glory, and redeeming us through Jesus in every way imaginable. That's what it means when it says we become a new creation, that we become transformed. But you might be asking, okay, Landon, these are both Old Testament passages. What does the New Testament have to say about the sick getting healed? What does it have to say about God's desire to heal people? Well, we can look in James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15, and I want to show you guys what this says. To me, it's so powerful. Let's read it. James 5, verse 14 through 15 says, Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, 
and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. For me, this passage in James chapter 5 is like the nail in the coffin. It is the straw on the camel's back on the topic of healing, at least in my mind. Because it says so clearly that the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And honestly, if we read through the Gospels and we look at the teachings of Jesus, it is so clear that faith is the currency of heaven. That anything is possible as long as you believe. It it lists out all the different signs that follow the believer. Over and over, it gives us these lists of what happens for those that are believers. They'll cast out demons, they'll lay their hands on the sick and they'll recover, they'll speak in new languages. And so we can see that this gift of healing, this um, act of, of laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover, it follows faith, it follows the believer. And I think it's not a coincidence at all that This is such a hot potato topic between believers where people aren't sure whether or not God heals or he doesn't. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, and we're just not sure. And so we find ourselves praying for people saying, God, if it's your will, I pray that you'd heal this person. But I believe that God already showed us it is his will. He actually put wounds on his body and whips, stripes on his back so that we could have healing in our bodies in every circumstance. And I don't think that that's blasphemy. I think that that's what the Bible has to say. He's the one that heals all our diseases. There's a passage in Matthew 17. It's an example of when God's own disciples, or rather Jesus' own disciples, they were praying for someone who was a paralytic boy, and he wasn't healed. And the father brought the boy to Jesus, and he said, I brought this boy to your disciples for them to pray for him, and he wasn't healed. And Jesus, he didn't say, oh, well, it must not have been God's timing. Oh, maybe God is trying to teach you something through your sick boy. He actually corrected and rebuked his disciples for being negative or corrupt in their thinking. And he said, how much longer will I be with you? Basically saying, how have you guys not gotten this yet? This is so important. You need to get this before I leave. Because if you do, the th- if you believe the things that I believe, if you know in your heart the things that I know, you'll do the things that I do. And Jesus laid his hands on the boy, and he was totally healed. And so it's an example in the New Testament where where Jesus' disciples prayed for someone, and they didn't get healed. But Jesus prayed for him, and he did get healed. It was God's will for the boy to get better, but the disciples prayed, and he didn't. It was God's will that this boy would be completely restored, but when the disciples prayed, he didn't get healed. But when Jesus came on the scene, He did. And I believe that we can learn a lesson from this, that Jesus is our example. That when we look at Jesus, we see who the Father is. It says in Hebrews 1 that he's the express image of the invisible God. That if you've seen Jesus, then you have seen the Father. And everyone that Jesus prayed for was healed. But there are examples like this one, or really just this example, where the disciples prayed and he didn't get healed. We can see in Matthew and we can see see the same story in Mark repeated in a different way. So what, what am I trying to communicate? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that anything is possible if you believe, but we have to settle on what God's will is on this topic of healing because if we don't settle on it, then we'll be tossed and blown about. We'll find ourselves praying for someone and then if they didn't get healed, maybe saying to ourselves afterwards, oh, well, maybe it wasn't God's will. But the sign of healing, it actually follows the believer. And all of a sudden, we're not sure what we believe. And we're starting to produce the fruit of what we believe all over again, again and again. We're actually validating, oh, well, it must not have been God's will because it didn't happen. But we're teaching ourselves, when we have thinking like that, we're teaching ourselves to not believe. But the sign of healing follows the believer. And so I want us to be people that believe that God is a healer, that we're putting our hands on the sick. And even if we don't see them recover, we are growing up in Christ and we are maturing and we're going to follow Jesus because he healed everyone's diseases. It says that everyone that came to him was healed. And Jesus is our example that we get to follow. He says, if you believe, you'll do the things that I do and even greater works. And so I want to be a believer and not someone that doubts or questions 
who our God is because we know who he is through Jesus. So let's pray. Let's pray that God would put this truth in our heart, that we'd be able to latch onto it and make it our own, that this word uh, in the scripture would become flesh in our lives, that we'd find ourselves laying our hands on the sick and seeing them recover. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for everyone that's watching this video today. Lord, I thank you that it, it's your will and it's your desire for the sick to be healed. You made our bodies and you made them to work and to function. And so, Lord, I even pray for anyone that's watching this video that has sickness in their body or pain or inflammation anywhere in their body. And I say, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that it's your desire that our bodies would be completely whole and well. You made them to work for us. And I ask you that you would give us a fire in our heart and a desire to see the sick healed, that we would look to you as our example to follow, not as just Jesus, the one that healed the sick, but I'm still like figuring out whether what my gifting is. Lord, you gave us uh, this amazing opportunity to follow you and to lay our hands on the sick and to see them recover when we believe. Thank you for giving us a conviction in our heart for being a believer in this area of healing so that we can have confidence to lay our hands on the sick, knowing that you desire for them to get better and that our faith and our clarity of mind is growing and growing and maturing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and drop a like on the video. And if you have any questions or comments, write something in the comment section. I'll be sure to respond to it as soon as I can. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a great day.